what we're doing is called pre-cooling. Yeah. And you've probably been listening to Craig Heller explain this to Huberman. He's like, he was doing per-cooling, extracting heat between sets during a strenuous workout. Mm -hmm. And Heller showed that if you cool the body, the mitochondria will increase their peak power output and they will not get fatigued. So cooling will help you reach a higher level of athletic performance. Now we're not per cooling between sets, we're pre cooling the exercise. And here's mm -hmm. what Heller didn't talk about. You get a big testosterone boost. Yeah. When men cool off first and they don't have to do a strenuous exercise afterwards and they do 20 minutes, it could be exercise bike, you go for a walk for half an hour. Uh, I like doing lunges, I like my steel mace. So a little bit of light exercise to rewarm the limbs, mm -hmm. they get a big boost in testosterone. And this wow. explains my lab reports because I've been putting them online now for five years. I'm a fat 59 year old sedentary college professor and my testosterone is over a thousand nanograms per deciliter. So how do you think that happens? The testosterone is a reflection of your metabolism. Testosterone is made in the mitochondria. And this is what people don't realize, that all sex hormones originate in the mitochondria. So if your mitochondria aren't right, you can't possibly be synthesizing enough sex hormones to have a higher level of testosterone. Turns out there's a study, goes way back to 1991, in which they tried ice, well, cold stimulation for recovery from exercise. Just like, you know, your high school track coach says you're supposed to do after practice. Right. That lowers testosterone. It lowers luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone is what yeah. signals the gonads to make the testosterone. But if you reverse the order, which is what they did in 1991, if you do the cooling before you do the exercise, luteinizing hormone goes up through the roof. Testosterone goes up through the roof. So by reversing the order, you get the hypertrophy. You get the muscle building hormone. Mm. Plus, you speed recovery. Everybody and this is a slight exaggeration, but everybody who hasn't been listening to Joe Rogan on this is still doing it wrong. And then, you know, whether it's Thomas DeLauer or Peter Atia or BioLane or somebody, and they'll do a video, ice baths don't work, and they'll get 100,000 clicks because they're still doing the ice baths after the exercise. When you reverse the order, readers all over the world are sending me their labs and then getting this huge boost in testosterone, huge boost in mood, huge boost in energy because they're pre-cooling instead of cooling afterwards. I didn't, I haven't, I've heard about this, but I have not witnessed this phenomena of people online saying ice baths don't work. Um, is you, the main reason they're saying it because it c crushes testosterone and muscle hypertrophy? You are on the right track. Uh, there's a lot online now that is bashing ice baths. We mm -hmm. went for two years where Joe Rogan was saying, oh, Morosco is the best thing ever. Yeah. You know, I get so much out of it. Yep. And he's right. But the pendulum has swung. There are some people who never want to get into an ice bath. And so, especially when Stacey Sims went on the Huberman podcast, she went on Stephen Bartlett's podcast, and then she went on Mel Robbins' podcast. Now, Mel Robbins has a Morosco. She's a customer. She loves it. She's posted about it. Yeah. But when Stacey Sims, with her PhD, went on Mel's podcast and said, well, you know, I don't really like ice baths for women. Mel was like, thank you for telling me that. I feel like people have been pushing the ice baths maybe too hard. So there's this social media backlash against ice baths now. But look at the comments under the clips. And the clips have all exaggerated Stacey Sims' position. She's like, ice has a role. She even talks about how ice baths will help women overcome endometriosis. Like there's a lot of benefits mm -hmm. for women with ice baths that Sims acknowledges. She's just saying the women should start a little warmer. And it's fine, start wherever you're ready. Uh -huh. When you look at the comments under the headlines on Instagram or Twitter, they run about 50-50. Half of the comments are saying, I don't understand how ice baths could be bad for women. You know, ice baths saved my life. Ice baths like rescued me from depression. Ice mm. baths helped me lose 20 pounds. You know, ice baths give me so much energy. I started doing ice baths and then I conceived a child. How could they possibly be bad for me? Then the other half of the comments are like this. I knew it. That's why I'll never do an ice bath. And, you know, and I'm, I'm glad I've never done one ever in my life. There are people who don't want to do the really tough things. Mm -hmm. And they want to hear from social media that science or whatever is telling them, 
uh, they don't have to do that. There's mm. some other reason that they're unhappy or they're lethargic or they yeah. have some thyroid disorder or something else. And I don't buy into that. If a cucumber facial and a day at the spa was going to cure cancer, I would be writing articles about that. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work that way. Right. Now, um, you said that this stuff, when you when you specifically do workouts after you do like a cold plunge or do a cold bath, uh, it, it boosts LH and follicle and FSH and uh, increases overall testosterone like dramatically not, no matter how old you are? I have not measured the FSH. And the okay. LH and the FSH have two different roles. If okay. I'm remembering this correctly, the LH will stimulate testosterone production in the gonads, whereas the FSH is more responsible for sperm production. Ah, okay. and those things are related, but they're also a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And I haven't tested FSH. I haven't examined sperm production. Right. Um, for me, it was really an accidental discovery. I had a blood test come back with an elevated PSA. Mm -hmm. So I'm 59, but at this time I was 52. And a lot of guys will get their blood test, find that their PSA is elevated, and then there's a whole sequence of things that happens. First thing that happens is you go online and you say, what the hell is a PSA? You know, and why is mine seven or whatever? It takes about 20 minutes online and WebMD is going to convince you that you're going to die of cancer. Yeah, like this course. is what happened to me because I'm prone to these catastrophic mm -hmm. thoughts. Then you're supposed to go to a urologist who will tell you your prostate is inflamed. Then recommend a biopsy. In a biopsy, they will remove like 16 tissue samples out of your prostate. I'm not recommending this. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a PhD, and those are two different degrees. But it sounds like an awful experience, and the men that I've talked to who have been through it told me horror stories about how painful it was and yeah. the false positives that can result. So then they examine these tissue samples, and they say, well, is it cancer? The false positive rate is very high, and so you might have nine come back cancerous and maybe the rest no cancer, and you say, well, I don't know. And then your urologist will say, as a precautionary measure, we should remove your prostate because it, it could be cancer. After you have your prostate removed, you will be incontinent, mm -hmm. almost certainly, at least for some time, and you'll never get an erection again. So this is what happens in my head at the age of 52 when I have a lab test showing my PSA is too high. I'm headed for these painful surgical procedures and a lifetime of erectile dysfunction, and I wasn't signing up for that. I was recently separated from my wife, and I was thinking, what woman is ever going to love me? How am I ever going to have like a romantic life again if I go through with this prostatectomy and I can't ever get it up? So I said, I'm going to find some other way to do it. I'm going to use ketogenic diet and ice baths because both of those are good for inflammation. And I got into, at that time, it was a chest freezer that I got you know, from Kenmore. Mm -hmm. And it was this big, ugly, dirty thing. But every day I got into that because I was afraid I was going to die. Took me four months later. And in the interim, we'd invented Morosco, you know, So there's a cleaner solution that makes its own ice. I go back in to get my labs because I finally got the courage to check again. And my PSA had dropped from 7 down to 1.8. 1.8, no elevated risk of prostate cancer. So I'm like, I've done it. I waited a few more weeks. I got another blood test. I got the whole male panel this time. 1.1 on the PSA. So I'm in the clear. Now I'm going to go to a urologist. I think I'm going to get a big pat on the back. He's going to be like, oh, this is a miracle. You know, I should, how did you do this? I need to know. He wasn't interested in my PSA. He didn't care. He's like, yeah, that's fine. What I'm really worried about is your testosterone reading because my testosterone was 1180 nanograms per deciliter and the lab report flagged it. They put it in red. They said it's too high. It's out of range. My urologist was about my age and he's looking at me and he's like, there's no way. He's like, I just want one more test. He thinks- You're on the I'm roids. Exactly right. <laughs> but he goes, there's no way. And at that time, most medical doctors still believed that increased testosterone levels would increase the risk of prostate cancer. Mm. I even had a friend who had a prostatectomy and he was on testosterone suppressing drugs because his urologist was saying, we really need to kick the crap out of this prostate cancer. We're gonna suppress your testosterone. Testosterone is anabolic. It promotes the growth of cells. Mm -hmm. And according to this theory, we should get your testosterone down until we're sure that you're in the clear. Right. My friend gained like 30 pounds, of course, because he was 
he was feminized. He was chemically castrated, essentially. Right. He felt miserable. He had no energy, but it's what his doctor told him to do. So at that time, I'm at the urologist's office, and he's like, this guy, this college professor, he's on the sauce. I want to get his luteinizing hormone checked. I didn't know what luteinizing hormone was. I got to go back to the lab. I got to go back to Google. I got to get another test. Comes back. 8.9. I am off the charts too high. I'm in like over sex 19 year old territory with these sex hormones. So I send the report to my urologist. I never heard from him again. Like he doesn't care about my PSA. He doesn't care about my testosterone. This is how little I know about, you know, practicing medicine. Mm -hmm. What is he going to do? Change the way that he treats his patients? It makes no sense. Is some guy going to show up with an elevated PSA? And now this urologist in Scottsdale, Arizona is going to say, hang on a second, you know, before I do any surgery with you, you should try the ice bath protocol because that worked for a patient. That, mm. I'll, I'll put him out of business. It doesn't make any sense. So instead, I wrote an article, you know, like this is what happened to my testosterone when I was doing ice baths to treat my prostate. Danny, nobody reads my articles. Like I put it up on moroscoforge.com. Nobody cared. But then I'm going to Iceland. I was going with a girlfriend I had at the time in December. It's going to be dark. We're going to see the northern lights. So we're on this plane. I land in Reykjavik and I got to find this rental car under like three feet of snow. I have no, you know, the worst part of the rental car is always trying to find the car and I have to brush off all this and my phone, now that it's back on, it's going and all these signals. I get into the car and I open up my phone in the cold and all these people are saying, I saw you on the Joe Rogan show. I'm like, no, 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 no. I think I would know mm -hmm. if I was on Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah. He read my article. He put my picture up there mm -hmm. and he said to David Goggins, I've been doing something different. This was December, 2022. I have been doing the ice bath before I do the exercise. I've been doing this three days. And Goggins is like, well, how's that working? And Joe's like, it's hard, but it's working. Mm. Now, guys all over, they pause the video and they zoom in and they found my picture and they found my article. They're reading the stuff, they're trying this protocol and they send me their labs from all over the world. <laughs>